Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The first Gulfstream G600 is delivered. The Mars rover has some new finds seven years after landing. And the Boeing 747 art exhibit will return to Burning Man. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. Yesterday, General Dynamics delivered their first Gulfstream G600 to a U.S. customer. The milestone comes after the aircraft received FAA type and production certificates back on June 28th. The aircraft enters service after design and test program that included flying nearly 100,000 hours in the company's labs and more than 3,200 hours of flying in the air. The G600 can carry passengers non-stop from Paris to Los Angeles or Hong Kong at an average speed of Mach 0.9. The aircraft is equipped with a symmetry flight deck, which includes active controlled side sticks and 10 touch screens. The G600 already has more than 10 city pair speed records and flies 6,500 nautical miles at its long range cruise speed of Mach 0.85. Its maximum operating speed is Mach 0.925, the same as the company flagship Gulfstream G650ER. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. There's never been a better time to become a pilot. At the Sling Pilot Academy, you can get your private, commercial, and instrument ratings in nine months for less than $63,000 and do it in modern, fun airplanes. Your flight training is going to be as exciting as your future career as an airline pilot. SlingPilotAcademy.com Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. If you have any story suggestions for this, any of our other programming or website, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. We'd love to hear from you. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at a few stories coming out of the aviation industry. It's time for today's trip around the patch. Royal Air Force Typhoon fighter jets intercepted five Russian military aircraft earlier this week. The Typhoons are operating from Amari Air Base in Estonia as part of NATO's Baltic Air Policing Mission. On Monday, the fighter jets intercepted a Russian Antonov AN-26 Curl transport aircraft as well as a Tu-142 Bear bomber and two Su-27B flanker fighters later that day. And then on Tuesday, the Typhoons intercepted a Russian Tupolev Tu-134 Krusty transport aircraft flying close to Estonian airspace. The Drone Racing League has taken to Kickstarter to launch its street-ready variant of the Racing Drone, which will be used by all pilots in the 2019 DRL Alliance World Championship season. This street-ready variant of the Racing Drone comes after DRL received many requests to purchase a Racer 3 drone. The campaign has an all-or-nothing goal of $350,000 and a pledge of $599 to put you in line to receive one of the new drones, which has an estimated delivery of April of 2020. Banyan Air Service recently completed its first Honda Jet Advanced Performance Modification Group package, which was developed by Honda Aircraft to offer improved performance and avionics capabilities to owners of the HA420 Honda Jet. The APMG package provides the aircraft with a takeoff field length reduction of 443 feet to 3,491 feet. Forward baggage capacity increased to 200 pounds and increased maximum takeoff weight of 10,700 pounds, resulting in more mission flexibility. Boeing, the U.S. Marine Corps, U.S. Air Force, and U.S. Navy celebrated the transformation of a 350,000 square foot facility outside of Philadelphia into a modern factory where company employees will build fuselages for the V-22 tilt rotor aircraft and modernize the MV-22 fleet for the Marines. Boeing says the new factory will improve safety and productivity, lowering operating costs and reducing environmental impact. We'll be right back with the rest of the news.
there's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Un einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. NASA's Curiosity rover has come a long way since touching down on Mars seven years ago. It's traveled a total of 13 miles and ascended 12,007 feet to its current location. Along the way, Curiosity discovered Mars had the conditions to support microbial life in the ancient past, among other things. And the rover is far from being done, having just drilled its 22nd sample from the Martian surface. It's now halfway through a region scientists call the clay-bearing unit on the side of Mount Sharp inside Gale Crater. Billions of years ago, there were streams and lakes within the crater. Water altered the sediment deposited within the lakes, leaving behind lots of clay minerals in the region. Rock samples that the rover has drilled here have revealed the highest amounts of clay minerals found during the mission. But Curiosity has detected similarly high amounts of clay on other parts of Mount Sharp, including in areas where MR didn't detect clay. A controversial art installation based on a Boeing 747 fuselage will be returning to this year's Burning Man. After the Bureau of Land Management and the Burning Man Project approved plans to move and store the exhibit. The art has been moved to a staging area in preparation for this year's event, where it's one of the largest installations. The Big Imagination Foundation first brought the exhibit to Burning Man in 2016. Last year, it sat for more than a month before being moved to a storage area, while officials crafted a plan to remove it, damaging the ecosystem. This year, a plan for moving the exhibit to the site and removing it had to be approved by both the BLM and the Burning Man Project. However, not everybody is thrilled the plane will be moved across the desert this year, with some local residents even being furious the plan was approved. The permit fees are intended to cover the cost of replanting and then fencing the dune area that the plane will transit while being moved across public land. And that's it for us this week. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe, tweet, and like us. And if you want to read up on some aviation news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you right back here on Monday.